Oh, hey, nice seeing you here. I was just thinking about uh, the climb the other day. That was a lot of fun. I got pretty sunburned, but it was a lot of fun. You know what I'm thinking of doing? I got these ND filters. Let's see if you can see that. Yeah, I got these ND filters for my uh, Mavic Mini. And I think it'd be a cool episode to uh, review these and check them out. Um, not that long ago, they just released the <clears throat> update for the Mavic Mini to where you can do um, uh, manual settings for video and photo. I can't remember if it had manual settings for photo, but either way, now you can do the manual exposure settings. If you watched my um, range test, uh, I'll put a card to that right here. If you watched my range test video, you saw a little bit of me tweaking with the ISO settings and whatnot for the camera. So I'm going to check these out. And basically what they are, ND filters are like sunglasses for your drone, for your quadcopter, excuse me. I don't like that other word. Um, so they're basically different strengths of a filter. Um, so you'd use them in different lighting conditions. And basically on a camera, from my understanding, what I'm learning is um, you want your ISO setting as low as possible. Basically what ISO is, is it's artificial brightening of the image. So the higher you get your ISO, um, you start to introduce noise into your photo and video. So you want your ISO as low as possible. And um, yeah, that's these help out maintaining a good balance between your ISO and your shutter speed. So yeah, I think when you uh, when you're in the bright light, you want your shutter speed faster, but doing that drops the light. So you have this balance between ISO and shutter speed, and these help maintain that balance. So let's check them out. All right, so I put one of them on. I put the ND8 filter on. I can't. I'm gonna have to look this up and read the thing and see which ones. Um, oh cool, it came with a lens cloth. Um, so yeah, that's what's inside the box is this little tiny case here. Looks like it has um, six different filters. One's just a UV. Four of them are different ND filter ratings. I think the higher the number, the darker. And then this one is just polarized, I believe. Yeah. So they just snap right on um, to the little lens. It's a little tricky getting them on there because it's just this little tiny metal thing. But uh, let's go take them out and see what they do. Actually, real quick, I just wanted to show my little charging station I have here. Um, right here I have my GoPro batteries. That is a battery charger for the Mavic Mini. It holds three batteries. This is the controller. That's my battery for my Sony and just some rechargeable batteries. Definitely getting a lot of battery and chargers. <laughs> Wow, would you look at that shot. I wish I would have held that shot for a lot longer. I had no idea how cool those waves would look.
All right, so what did I learn about those filters? First thing, I like them. Um, anybody that I know who's actually serious about photography has ND filters. Um, first of all, let's, I don't think I did a good job of explaining this earlier. I went back and watched the footage. So ND stands for neutral density. What does that mean? What that means is that the filters filter out light with no prejudice to color. They filter out all wavelengths, the exact same. So however they do that, the coating or whatever on it um, blocks all wavelengths of light, the same intensity, the same density, neutral density. So <clears throat> what that basically allows you to do is it allows you to film in brighter lighting conditions with longer exposure um, settings on your camera. So just in case you don't know what exposure settings are. So you have two main settings on a camera. You have a few others, I guess, when you're recording video. Um, so the first thing is your ISO setting. And your ISO, as explained earlier, is basically the sensor in the camera's um, sensitivity to light. The lower, the better, because the higher you start to introduce noise, as in grains and different textures into your pictures. So you want to always shoot as low as possible. It's not always the case. Sometimes, you know, in darker settings, you have to brighten it up, but you don't want to go too high. So, and then the other setting is the exposure setting, which is how long the shutter opens for, captures light before it closes again, and then it shuts the picture. So if you think back to old school photography, when you had actual film, um, very same thing, you know, they had ISO settings um, for film, actually. So it was, that film was sensitive to light at a certain rating, and people had to use different film for different lighting conditions. Digital photography has made things a lot easier. So let's go back to the ND filters. So allowing you to open the shutter for longer, your exposure setting. So if you look at the numbers in the pictures, um, the ones with uh, a smaller denominator in the fraction are open for longer, right? And those ones open longer and capture more light. So if you're blocking out some of that light, you're able to open it longer and get the same, um, we'll say lighting, uh, density for lack of a better term, same hues, same tones and whatnot. And what that really benefits you for, as far as video is concerned, is it allows you to get a realistic motion blur. So if you look, you can see my hand is blurred. That's because I'm shooting in 30p. 30p is 30 frames per second. Um, and if you have a... Um, quicker shutter speed, it's going to be harder to pick that up because the shutter is opening really quickly. So anyway, I like them. I think they're really cool. Hopefully you liked the video. I think the um, time lapses turned out really, really cool. So smash that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed, you should totally do that right now. Go ahead. I'll give you a second or two. Alrighty. Thanks for watching.